Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Manchester City lose again as the title looks to be slipping out of their hands. How did they do it against Leicester City? Where did Leicester City go right? Where did Manchester City go wrong? Don't worry, here are the interviews we've got you covered. So on this edition of the interviews, we're gonna briefly break down how Leicester City beat Manchester City. So before we get into today's video, don't forget to give our video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it. The bell below does give you daily notifications regarding our organic, unfiltered soccer slash footy analysis. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we're going to break down the game into two halves. Look at the first half, see how Leicester approached the game and how they were able to go into halftime level 1-1. Then get to the second half, see what issues City encountered and how Leicester were able to pull off an upset. But first, let's get to the starting lineups. We look at Manchester City 4-3-3 slash 4-1-4-1, however you want to call it. You have Aguero up front, out in the wider areas, Sterling and Sané, and in midfield, Bernardo, Kevin De Bruyne, and Gundogan. Then we look at Leicester City, 4-5-1, Vardy up front, out in the wider areas, Madison and Albrighton. And when we get into midfield, Chow Chowdhury, they have Mendy, and they have Ndidi. So now let's get to the first half. Let's see how Leicester caused Manchester City some issues and how they were able to go into halftime level 1-1. So when we look at Manchester City against Leicester City, we have to look at the system somewhat both identical because Leicester City without the ball is a 4-5-1. With it, it's supposed to be a 4-3-3. City, on the other hand, looked to be a 4-3-3 to start the game. They had Gundogan a bit deeper. They did control large spells of possession. Leicester, who had played Chelsea in the previous week, stuck to what they did best, dropping off into more of a 4-5-1. But what was really impressive about that 4-5-1 was that the gap between the midfield bank and the back four, who often would sit close to the edge of the box, was very tight. So it's very tough to find spaces in between those lines to get on the ball, and it frustrated Manchester City throughout the opening stages. What we did see from City was that they had the wider players, which did make sense because Pereira and Chilwell do like to get forward. Sané and Sterling are more disciplined in comparison to Mares, so to play those two in the wide areas was key, and they try to get those two to run at the Leicester City fullbacks. What that meant now was that Delph, who did tuck in, he played a bit more narrow, and Danilo did play more narrow as well. Danilo did stay deeper, and we did see Delph kind of move into more of a midfield zone. It did look at times like a 3-2-2-3 in the sense where they had Danilo kind of drop off, but keep a narrow position in that back three. They had Delph move into more of a midfield zone, just not really close to Gundogan, but a bit spaced out. They had Bernardo and Kevin De Bruyne playing a bit higher, then they had the wider players. What that does do is that that it does allow create space for 1v1s but what was good about Leicester City was that Albrighton was very disciplined he stayed back he tried to ensure that there was protection for Pereira who is susceptible to being cut out positionally sometimes he's a bit too high sometimes he's caught out not facing his marker not knowing when his marker is making the run in behind and Sané did do that on a few occasions but he coped well for the most part so when you have that there you have the wider players out and then it really relies on Gundogan and Delft to kind of find that ball into the attacking five but that didn't really work out in their favor Gundogan played a lot of diagonals that were overhit same with Delft there was only one Delft ball in particular where he was in a bit of a more narrow position and he clipped the ball over Albrighton and over Pereira for Sané to break in but again his ball across the box was an attack and we did see that on a few occasions but that was what City were basically trying to do the problem here is that a lot of the stick was put down on Gundogan we'll get to that more later but but here, that was what they were trying to do, trying to get that trying to get um, another player in midfield with them, trying to create space for the wider players, but they struggle in that zone. And then when we break down the manner in which the goals were scored, it didn't really stem from, at least City's goal, didn't really stem from what they were trying to do because it's Laporte pushing forward. And again, no real press because Vardy's a bit higher or Vardy's sitting off and ahead of the midfield. So he plays forward and he's able to find Aguero dropping off into space ahead or in between Ndidi and Mendy. And Didi's trying to call a marker to him, but he switches off and the ball is being able to play it into him. And what happens here is that it kind of does actually stem from the fact that Pereira, again, not really 
a good positionally because you have the center you have the center back stepping and you have Bernardo who's able to run across Pereira get onto the Aguero flick and is able to fire a shot hash Michael too easy shouldn't let your runner go both side but he was having problems with Sané positionally and then again you see Bernardo getting hit in behind him and that is an uh, error for Pereira and the Leicester City um, hole as it is and then we look to Leicester's goal it stems from Danilo challenging Chilwell ball is won by Chilwell into the path of Ndidi and this is one of the problems that they did have was that Madison was playing on the left hand side but he looked to tuck in narrow and when he did tuck in narrow what happens here is that he's able to get to the left of Gundogan and again too much space in that midfield zone because with Gundogan sitting deeper you have De Bruyne you have Bernardo looking to play much higher and City needed protection in that zone and with an uh, intelligent number 10 was able to find space like Madison it doesn't really help Gundogan in that favor ball played into him Vardy drifts out to the to the space behind Danilo, which makes sense to drag out stones. Then you have Madison making the run. You have Delph coming coming back, but again, Vardy's able to locate Albrighton, peeling off Delph, who ball watches and doesn't really know that there's a man running in behind him. So when that ball is played and Albrighton's able to get onto it and not his effort past Ederson. But in the opening stages of that first half, that was what was really going down. You had Leicester with a pretty good shape, but there were susceptible some, to some errors positionally from Pereira, from the fact that, again, the midfield, City's midfield was getting too much time on the ball, but they weren't able to connect passes. And it was a bit odd that City didn't try to exploit Madison trying to tuck in narrow and push Danilo and Sterling forward, but that wasn't the case here. And Leicester were fortunate to get a goal on the break. When we look to the other, half, other side of that first half, we saw Leicester make a tactical change. So now let's get to that and see how that tactical change ended up changing the game towards the end of the first half. With Leicester moving more to a 4-2-3-1, we did see some changes. We had Madison move to more of a central role with Vardy, and they dropped off a bit deeper to sit on Gundogan and Delph when City did have possession. Albrighton moved out to the left-hand side. You had Chowdhury move out over into the right-hand side as well. He was able to provide some cover for Pereira. But when you look at it, what changed here was that Madison now was able to get the ball in much free space in midfield based on the fact that Delft wasn't always in that central role and as you can see there's so much space in midfield for Gundog in the cover it just doesn't add up to how Pep didn't ask De Bruyne to drop off a bit deeper or Bernardo to drop off a bit deeper. Fernandinho was missed in the game you can make that case but the thing is that in these games where teams have an intelligent number 10 or they're able to break swiftly in transition we would see Fernandinho and Gundog play together and they would sit much deeper towards each other to ensure that they're able to cover up that ground here whether Fernandinho be there by himself it's there's a very high chance that he wouldn't be able to cope with Madison as well we saw in the earlier stages and Didi just simply spinning away from Bernardo and what we have here is again look at it you have um, Madison drift out to the left hand side of Gundogan ball is able to be played into him and he's able to quickly transition the ball out to the left hand side but before we get more into Madison there were a, there was a spell where goalkeepers and city players were making mistakes around their box and that was key Schmeichel clearing the ball out Danilo was able to intercept it we see Sterling deliver a ball into Sané who was able to break free based on the fact that Pereira wasn't in position however Men Morgan and Mendy were able to clear their lines but what happens here is that Sané is able to pick up the loose ball and drop it off back to De Bruyne and what happens there now is that De Bruyne runs when De Bruyne gets the ball you see Sané run across Pereira and De Bruyne is able to clip the ball between Chardy and Mendy because he runs by them first and then Pereira the ball is able to be played in and as Sané gets that ball again in that left half space we see Aguero run off Maguire but Aguero flicks his shot over the net great chance for Manchester City again Pereira's um, positioning being exposed not being able to stay goal side Mendy and Chardy were able to be bypassed quickly and that's one chance that was created another chance that Schmeichel again with a poor clearance that now falls into the path of Aguero and Aguero is able to run at Morgan Pereira again extremely high that's a big problem and he's able to play the overlapping run into Kevin De Bruyne in that left half space but Maguire comes across quickly to make another vital interception to ensure that City aren't able to build on their lead there but when you think about Madison in general like I said just able to find those spaces some of 
Leicester City's better chances did stem from the fact that they were able to get the ball out to him. Two in particular stemmed within a minute span. Albrighton getting the ball on the left-hand side. Danilo and Bernardo tracking very well. But what happens there is that he locates Gundogan and he locates Madison. He's able to flick the ball in between both of them. And Madison's able to cut across his marker in Gundogan and cut back in and force Ederson into a key save. Another opportunity, it's Albrighton down the left-hand side. And what happens there is that this this time they target Delph and it's Chowdhury who was able to get in behind him, cross his plate into the box and he nods his effort from point blank range into the path of Ederson who's able to push it away but again like Pereira Danilo I mean Delph just man man watching ball watching to be to be precise not noticing that a runner's moving in behind him not tracking him just stayed in this position and again they got the warning sign Ederson bailed them out there the final opportunity it just stems from Delph making I mean Danilo making a silly mistake not being able to get onto the free kick that Maguire did punt into the into the left channel and Chilwell now is able to break forward and what happens there is that with Vardy making a run across Laporte and Delph not watching the fact that Madison is breaking into the box, Del Madison's able to break in between them but the cross is slightly over hit. But as you can see Madison's movement is causing Gundogan problems, Albrighton is offering a threat down the left hand side, Delph is still not finding, stop, still not being able to mark his runners breaking into the box. So City weren't exactly going into the second half with a level of ease knowing the fact that they could win the game whereas for Leicester although they did make the change they were making mistakes at the back and Pereira's positioning was a key issue so now let's get to the second half see what issues City encountered and how Leicester were able to win the game Leicester persisted with the 4-2-3-1 in the second half. We saw in the opening stages of the first half, they didn't have anyone close to Vardy, anyone putting any pressure on Gundogan. Madison did that, and he was involved in two of their better chances, or their one best chance prior to their winner. But before that, it wasn't really that cutthroat for them, based on the fact that City were still trying to create chances out in wider areas, getting the shuttlers to push out in behind the fullbacks and trying to drag out the shuttlers or drag out Maguire or, and Morgan into those positions. We saw Sturt Sane play out wide and we had De Bruyne drive in. He delivered a cross into the box, but they never really worked out on that side. And on the opposite side, Bernardo and Sterling did swap positions. Sometimes Bernardo was wide and Sterling was narrow, drifting in behind and vice versa. But that didn't really work out either. Their crosses and pullbacks were all cleared. So we have to really look at how Madison affected the game first. And in the sense that City, although we like to think that Fernandinho would have made a big difference here, this was down to the midfield itself. We look at one of the opportunities where it doesn't lead to a great goal scoring opportunity, but it does see Bernardo stuck near Chowherdy and stuck near Mendy. And what happens there is that the ball is just squared to Ndidi and De Bruyne presses late. And with him pressing late, now you have Gundog in there and you have Madison who could drift out behind the presser to find that space behind the ball, something they weren't getting in the opening stage of the first half. He picks up the ball to the right of Gundogan, and now Leicester are able to build forward. The actual chance stems from Gundogan clearing the ball upwards. And what happens here is that Mendy nods it into the path of Ndidi. Now you think that, okay, City are fine. Bernardo's near Ndidi. De Bruyne's near Mendy after he nods the ball. But Mendy continues his movement in between the central midfielders and they don't move to try and close him down. De Bruyne doesn't track him. So now indeed he plays the ball into him, which forces Gundogan to step forward. And who's able to get the pass in behind Gundogan? It's Madison. With that being said, Vardy gets back on side, splits the center backs. So the ball is played beyond stones, but Laporte tracks it well and makes a sliding intervention. But that's how Madison was able to affect the game. That was something that they weren't getting with their initial shape. But with that being said, City also did find space in midfield. It was very open in the second half. Kevin De Bruyne in particular. Gundogan slides the ball to him. He's in acres of space to drive forward, but he slides it wide to Raheem Sterling in behind in the wider area. So Sterling now picks up the ball and Diddy recovers. Him and Chilwell double up on Sterling. The first cross hits off and Didi comes back, but then he splits them and it's De Bruyne making the run in behind. Finally, those combinations work. What happens though is that his first touch is a bit too heavy and Schmeichel's able to clear it. And you look to another opportunity where it's Sané on the break, sliding it to De Bruyne. 
One of the issues that happened in the first half, Pereira caught high. What happens here now is that he's able to, Sani is able to make the run from outside in behind the center backs, and De Bruyne plays that ball right to him, but his first touch is poor and it goes out. That's another opportunity for them. Aguero was found between the lines, where he's able to run at the back four, cutting on Maguire and fire a shot wide. And then we have another opportunity where it's Aguero who ends up poking the ball into the path of Bernardo Silva, following Gray, who had come on for Chowardy and moved out into the wider areas he played the ball back to Mendy Aguero poked the loose ball into the pack of Bernardo Silva David Silva who had come on for Kevin De Bruyne now is able to slide the ball in behind that space again because who is high um, Ricardo's high and Sané is able to run in behind Morgan because he has that advantage from the outside in to get played in but Maguire comes across and he intervenes once again. City were getting into great chances, Leicester were sweeping up and you have to think that with the way the game was going Leicester had to have another opportunity. They brought off Madison, they brought on Simpson, they pushed Ricardo higher to ensure that they had more coverage down that side and they eventually get the winner. Yes, Sané should have cleared it when you think about it, it's a moment of brilliance from Ricardo. You have to think that Ederson can't save that opportunity. So when you break it down and you look at how the game progressed, there were so many elements. It was first Leicester not starting well in the sense that they didn't have anyone on the on the central midfielders, they didn't have any goal scoring threat. They moved to the 4 2 3 1. Madison comes on. He's able to link play, able to exploit the space in City's midfield because De Bruyne and Bernardo were playing too high. City had their chances, combinations of wide areas, Sane breaking in, exploiting P Ricardo Pereira's poor positional play. But at the end of the day, they didn't take their chances. When Leicester got theirs, they were able to exploit Delph and a moment of brilliance from Rick Ricardo was able to ensure that they got the three points and City fall further behind Liverpool to the top of the table but let me know what you guys think what is wrong with City how could they fix their issues are they going to be able to catch Liverpool in the title hunt and what about Leicester will they finish in the top half of the table can they challenge for a Europa League spot meet me in the comments below don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video give it a thumbs up and that was your daily dose of the interviews